Come to Cartoony Bill for family laughs and a thrill and lots of fun that no one can outgrow. Watch how cartoons are all made, then join a cartoon parade, starring in your own video green screen show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages, if I could direct your attention just past our indoor mini golf course, through these massive gates of comfortable boat right awaits to escort you through an array of the most dangerous Stone Age beasts mankind has yet to witness. <laughs> Dad, it's just pretend. So don't you stop to ask why it's time for all to drop by. Hit you right on a peel of banana. Come to Cartoon Evil for family laughs and a thrill. We're all just 20 minutes north of Atlanta. It looks easy, folks, but it takes a lot of rehearsal. All right, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming out today. Uh, and everybody's really busy, and I just wanted to make sure that we all know what's going on with the show. And I just wanted to bring everybody up to date, so I really appreciate everybody coming out. I know it's, uh, you know, everybody's got some questions, and we'll get to those in just a minute. Once more, I wanted to thank everybody for coming out today to the first official Cartooniville Studio Show Town Hall meeting. Um, as we all know, following my initial meeting with Atlanta Interfaith Broadcasting in the summer of 2012, I agreed to produce a half-hour pilot of an animated children's program entitled The Cartooniville Studio Show. It was an ambitious idea, a mix of original animated characters, puppetry, and live-action video combined with green screen uh, characters into a cartoon world and all produced on a local budget, no less. After nine months of production, we had delivered the half-hour pilot, even had to edit it down shorter, in fact. Uh, and my last meeting with AIBTV resulted in a list of comparatively easy fixes uh, before we aired the show. Uh, it was mainly some audio tweaking and then maybe uh, one effect shot that just needed a little bit of repair. However, it is now October of 2013 and the pilot episode still has not aired. I know a lot of you have questions which we'll all address shortly. Uh, most of them boil down to the following two categories. What happened and how are we going to fix it? But it's not up to me to ask the questions. That's why I asked all of you here today. So let me open things up to your questions now. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Right here in the front. What happened to delay the broadcast of the episode? Very good question. I mentioned, of course, the fact that the station had requested some fairly simple revisions. That wasn't why I pulled out of the contract. It was what they said next that caused me great concern. It was the fact that they said they wouldn't air the first episode until they had another they could air the following week. As you can imagine, the notion of working yet another nine months on spec, that defines as temporarily free for anyone that doesn't follow that, it was just too much for me to handle. Um, it didn't hit me first, of course, but afterward, I just couldn't ask everyone to do the same routine for another nine months and then get on the air almost two years later. You just said it took nine months to get the first episode together. What took you so long? Most of you are animation students, and some of you who took my intro to animation class remember that it took you almost nine weeks just to prepare a 20 to 30 second cartoon by yourselves. Now, imagine trying to complete almost 15 to 20 minutes of character animation. But you almost had a dozen people working on the show. That still sounds like an awfully long time. True. Um, it would seem that way. First of all, almost half of those people were voice artists, uh, two on-screen actresses, another puppeteer besides myself, my wife, as a matter of fact, she was also painting the scenery for Professor Everyone's Hall of Cryptids, and two videographers that left five people, again myself included, doing animation, and we were all working on spec. I've heard you use that term before. What does on spec mean? On spec means that there's no guarantee of getting paid. It might not be fair to say we were working on spec, actually. Um, we did have a contract after all, but we wouldn't get paid until 10 days after delivery of the approved Air Ready episode. When will the episode actually air? <sighs> That's the most difficult question of all to answer. And I, I wish I had an answer for you. I, I'd like to know myself. But as I've learned the hard way, you simply cannot be a part-time TV producer. When will we get paid? As most of you know, the original contract agreed for me, the producer, to get paid 10 days after approval of the pilot episode, and I would begin distribution of owed stipends immediately. Although I delivered the final product, the final revisions were not made. Sylvie, who did the majority of the work, has already been paid in full from funds I got from another project. Uh, I'm getting another check in just a few weeks for this other project, which will allow me to settle up with the rest of you. So, is that okay? All right, um, next question. How will the new episodes get funded if you can't find investors? 
As most of you know, the original plan was that the station would be paying a modest portion of our production costs. How much was that? The actual figure is too embarrassing to mention. The idea was to get the show on the air and more work would come. But to give you a ballpark figure, the budget was less than $1,000. Yeah, that's right, three figures, but pretty close to four. By comparison, the only other show I could think of that comes close to our concept, a mix of live action, animation, and puppets, was Pee Wee's Playhouse, which ran from 1986 to 1991 on CBS. Its initial budget was somewhere between $325,000 and $525,000 an episode. My initial idea for the series was, well, with all the improvements in digital technology over the last two decades, why hasn't anybody else tried a similar show on a local level? Well, all of us know how that turned out. But I think we still have a bright future for this show if we can find investors. If not, we're ramping up for a Kickstarter.com campaign. What is Kickstarter.com for those that don't know about it, and how does it work? Kickstarter.com is a website for artists, videographers, and filmmakers that helps them find investors for a project. In a way, it's almost like a digital version of a fund drive on PBS. Public broadcasting services allow viewers to pledge support for the shows that go on by calling in during pledge drives. In return, as a token of appreciation, they send them t-shirts, coffee mugs, DVD sets of the series in question, yeah, that sort of thing. Now with Kickstarter.com, the pledges can be anywhere from $5 to $5,000, even $10,000. For the higher pledges, they might get actual props used in the movie, or even a guest appearance in the film, an invitation to the premiere, I think you get the idea. Then you set up a funding period, probably from three to six months, whatever time you think it'll take to get contributions. If you make the contribution goal, you get the money. Most animation students remember what happened with Walt Disney losing his first big cartoon star to the distributor. Will you own the characters on the show, or the TV station, or the investors? As part of the original agreement, I wanted to make certain that I retained ownership of the characters 100%. Some of you know that Walt Disney actually lost his first character, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, to a distributor who owned the character, even though Walt's studio created the series. I didn't want that to happen with any of my characters. Walt Disney was smart enough to own all of his characters after that, and even Walter Lance managed to own the Woody Woodpecker characters during his lifetime. If there are no more questions, then we'll... Yeah, I got a question, Professor Mark. Oh, sure, the little guy with the red hair and the rather enormous hat. Uh, what's your question? Yes, sir, what's the status of this here other show, this educational TV show I done heard you had in the works, the Skeeter Bug and Custer Show? I thought I recognized that voice of your Skeeter Bug. I'm afraid the Skeeter Bug and Custer show is going to have to wait until we get Cartooniville funded first. We already have the pilot done, and starting a whole other show would only delay production in Cartooniville even further. What in tarnation? You mean to tell me I'm being demoted to another one of your dang back burner projects, Professor Mark? Yeah, I'm sorry, Skeeter Bug, but maybe we could get you a guest spot on the Cartooniville show or something. <laughs> Guest spot? You think I want to end up like some sorry spin-off character series like them Ropers from Free's Company? They didn't last no half a season before they were canceled. That's the last time I take a bath and brush both my teeth to get all purified for you dead lame TV folks. We would pay for a guest appearance, you know. What the? <clears throat> hmm. Royalties or scale? Scale. Well, it would pay for running my bath water at least. I'll call you next week then, Professor Mark. What's wrong with Custer? Oh, he's just upset you downsized into an off-screen sound effect instead of making an on-screen appearance. I have to pay more for on-screen appearances. Besides, I haven't even finished building him yet. We'll talk more afterwards, Skeeterbug. Shoot me an email. Yeah, I'd like to shoot you something all right. Skeeterbug, be nice. I'm sorry, Professor Mark. Come on, Custer. No! All right, sorry about that, folks. When you open up the doors on these town hall meetings, just anybody can speak up. That's the format. Anyway, I wanted to thank you once more for all your help on the Cartooniville Studio Show so far, and please tell your family, friends, even church members about our forthcoming Kickstarter page. Any contributions they can help us with can not only make the TV show a reality, but an actual studio where kids of all ages can come to play.